Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to episode nine of Retro Buyer's Guide. I'm Mike, and today I want to talk about playing backup copies of Commodore 64 games using a 1530 data set and one of these. The uh, cassette adapters you used to put in your car tape deck so you could listen to your CD player or your MP3 player. Uh, they actually come in really handy for uh, playing backup copies of games on the uh, data set. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to this website, tapes.c64.no. You're going to need tap files, and this is a good spot to get them. Uh, if you go ahead and click on the game section, you will find a list of all the C64 tap files that they have backed up, and you can click on them and download them. Of course, you'll need to <clears throat> own a copy of the game before you download it, but that's none of my business. Uh, feel free to browse through the library. They have just about every tab file backup that you can think of for the Commodore 64, a lot of great games. So uh, go ahead and click on some of those and download them. The next thing you're going to need is a program to convert these tab files to WAV. And you'll want to go to Google, I can never remember the URL, and type in convert C64 tap to wave, and it'll pull up a website. Do that now. There we go. And it's this program, Wave PRG and Audio Tap. You'll need both of those, uh, depending on how you want to do it. Uh, you will need a Windows computer to do it as well. You can't do it on a Mac. And uh, this will give you the ability to convert those tap files to waves, uh, depending on how you want to do it, using uh, either audio tap or wave PRG. All right, guys. What you want to do is you want to take your tape, kind of tuck your cord across like that, go into your tape drive, get it tucked in there, come over to your Commodore 64 and type load. Gonna say press tape, play on tape, and what you want to do is you want to have your iPhone. Uh, what I do is I have Dropbox set up, um, and then these are all my C64 waves. Um, but we're gonna do Bubble Bobble, and what you do is you take this and you stick it in your phone jack. And you want to make sure your headphone volume is about is 75%. And you press play on the tape. Your tape will start going. And you go to your bubble bobble wave here. Press play. And you wait. You wait for your tape deck to stop. You can see the tape deck still going. Eventually it'll say finding bubble bobble, you'll make sure to pause it at that moment, and then wait for it to start going again, and then you hit play and you wait. The downside to loading, well anything with a 1530 data set is that it takes a long time. Some games can take as long as 8 to 10 minutes to load. So. What can you do during that time? Well, you can do a lot of things. You can ride a miniature horse. You could also visit the White House, go to a football game, or get to work on that science fiction book you've been meaning to write. Either way, it's gonna take a while, so strap yourself in. But when it finally does happen, oh man, is it great. Ah, Bubble Bobble, such a classic, and the C64 version is great. You know, when I go back and I visit the Commodore 64 library, I'm always impressed with what this computer was capable of. I mean, keep in mind, this came out way before the NES, in 1982. For 1982, this is damn impressive. If any of you older viewers were around back then, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, anyway, now that you know how to load C64 games on a data set, let's take a look at some others. 
Helicopter Emergency Rescue Operation, or HERO for short, is a single-player video game published by Activision in 1984. The gameplay is sort of reminiscent of Pitfall, which was also published by Activision. The object is to avoid creatures and take out obstacles to reach the bottom of a cave and rescue a trapped miner. It may look simple, but I love stuff like this. It's just good old-fashioned arcade-style fun. Next up is The Great Gianna Sisters, a platforming game released in 1987. One thing I want to mention is the loading screen. Hopefully you're not epileptic and having a seizure right now watching this, but geez, it's worse than that banned Pokemon episode. Anyways. So upon first glance, you may be thinking to yourself, hmm, this looks familiar. And you're right, it does look familiar because it's Super Mario Brothers. Legend has it that the German developers of this game were inspired to create a game like Super Mario Brothers, and uh, man, they did just that. It is pretty much Super Mario Brothers for the Commodore 64, uh, only they subbed out the brothers with sisters, uh, being the great Gianna sisters. But I mean, everything down from uh, you know the the bricks to the pipes and uh, the weird owl-like creatures that look like Goombas. Mushrooms everywhere, it's pretty much a blatant ripoff. Uh, still not a bad game for the C64. Uh, it doesn't take that long to load on tape, not as long as you would think anyway. And like I said, it's a decently fun game. If you feel like playing Super Mario Brothers on your Commodore 64, this is the best way to go about doing it. It even has a time limit, just like Super Mario Brothers. I mean, wow, it's it's so blatant in its rip offedness that uh, you can't help but just respect how blatantly they ripped off everything Nintendo in this game. It's it's amazing to me. Finding a copy of this game in the wild is nearly impossible, and even if you do manage to find a copy of it, it's going to be insanely expensive. The other rumor about this game is that Nintendo sued the pants off the developers, and every copy of the game was taken off the store shelves. Uh, I wonder why. In any case, uh, the best way to check this one out is definitely uh, to uh, download a copy and play it on your tape drive, or load it on your tape drive. Uh, so yeah, check it out. Great Gianna Sisters. Last Ninja is an isometric action adventure game developed and published by System 3 in 1987 for the Commodore 64. It was later ported to other systems including the Apple II and the Nintendo Entertainment System. Basically you walk from screen to screen beating up baddies and solving puzzles. I was never able to get too far in this game because I just had no clue what to do. I mean even here I'm furiously mashing buttons in a vain attempt to try to beat this guy up, but it's not working out too well for me. All in all, I don't think this is a very good game, but uh, I put it on the list anyway, so check it out if you want to. One developer nearly synonymous with the C64 is Epix, and their 1984 classic Summer Games is also one to check out. Featuring seven individual sports, this Olympic game simulator is, well, epic. In all seriousness, it's an alright game, but anytime you want to change sports, you'll need to reload from the tape data set, which gets annoying fast. Trust me on this, so if you're dead set on playing this one a lot, you'll want to hunt down a much faster loading copy on a five and a quarter floppy disk. I am so bad at this game. Finally, we have DJ Puff's Volcanic Capers. This is a rather obscure platforming game released in 1992 with pretty awesome music and fairly average gameplay, unfortunately. It's pretty fun, but I think there are a lot of traps and spikes and things like that that kind of cheapen the gameplay, in my opinion. Although graphically, it's a really good looking game on the C64, so I definitely recommend checking it out. 
Hey, what's up guys? If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we really appreciate the support and it helps us keep going, pumping out those videos every week. Uh, if you have a suggestion or some general feedback or if there's something you want us to cover, uh, leave us a comment on the videos. We, we read all of those and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, also, if you'd like to see some more videos, uh, click on these links here and uh, keep uh, checking us out on YouTube. Uh, we try to keep a video coming out every week. So uh, thanks again for all your support and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. All right, bye-bye.